This is the Tom Hartman Program. Welcome back. Tom Hartman here with you. And in the studio with me is Dave McCullough, part, a partner with Capital Media Partners, conservative. His uh, t Twitter handle is DT McCullough, M C C U L L O U C H. O C H. Almost. Almost. I got it right? O C H. That's what I said. Uh, you said uh, you. It's all right. Okay. McCullough like the chainsaw. C. Nobody gets that. C M C C. U L L O C H. There you go. Okay. Uh, there we go. Well, that's funny. I'm, you know, funny little beeping. Oh, it must be your phone in my in my IFB. Um, uh, anyhow, Dave, uh, you know, frequently debates me on television, and uh, here you are in our radio studio. Nice to have you here with us, Dave. Good to hear it. Yeah. Good to be here. So uh, I, I wanted to talk about solar power. This uh, the Kate Ar Aronoff uh, wrote a great piece for the Guardian today. Uh, the, the headline is, Utility Companies Won't Let You Sell Your Own Solar Power. The, why not? The electric utility sector is broken, but the transformation we need will be virtually impossible so long as a handful of wealthy elites are calling the shots. And they point out that the electric utilities spent $114 million last year lobbying to end net metering. That is the ability of people who put solar panels on their houses to sell electricity back into the grid. And uh, so far this year, they've spent $59.9 million dollars. Now that, uh, you know, if, if you look at Germany, which has uh, in fact generated more than half of their electricity one day this summer uh, from solar power because they incentivize people to put solar panels on their rooftops uh, with what was called the 100,000 rooftop program, uh, originally designed to replace one nuclear power plant. It grew so fast it replaced 10 nuclear power plants in the first 10 years and they had to stop the subsidies because they just couldn't until they could upgrade the grid, which they did. Um, and now it's like just off to the races. Um, Germany is the cloudiest country in Europe. Germany is north of Michigan latitude-wise. It's Canada latitude-wise. And it is as cloudy as Michigan, which is one of the cloudiest states in the United States. And yet, they're generating half their power on a good day from solar power and, and doing it very, very successfully. Why should we allow the oligarchs who own the for-profit utilities in the United States to say, no, you can't do that? Well, first of all, they've built the grid. They built each power company's grid, which ultimately connects to all the other grids. They did it with on our public space, and they did it with with uh, uh, Fifth Amendment takings, with uh, uh, what's it called, uh, eminent domain takings. That you know, we gave them the permission to do that. We gave them the land to do that. So don't they have some obligation to us? I think they certainly do have an obligation as a public utility to provide power in exchange for money. Now, and certainly, I, I agree that, that net metering is a, is a general plus. It's a good thing. It's a good thing that we have the ability to make our own solar, and there's incentives. Typically, I believe in market-based incentives rather than government incentives, but it's a good thing. It's a very good thing. The challenge, and I want to take a little uh, note about that, that uh, lobbying figure. You said uh, $100-something million was spent on lobbying against net metering. No, that was just in general, uh, mm -hmm. in general for, okay. uh, for the energy industry. And there is no doubt there's a lot of concern about the, energy, the uh, uh, transmission lines. Our infrastructure has a lot of problems, a lot of challenges. We've seen rolling blackouts in California years ago. We've seen- now, That was a scam by a for-profit company. Enron did that, and they shut down power plants to create those blackouts to take down Governor Gray Davis, which they successfully did. And Ken Lay had a secret meeting with Arnold Schwarzenegger about a year before this all happened. When Daryl Issa found out about it in a press conference, he broke down in tears, you'll recall, because he thought he was going to be the next governor. Um, I mean, shouldn't we say enough with these private companies? About half the, just, just to set the frame, about half the electricity in the United States is generated by publicly owned utilities. And publicly owned utilities, by and large, are very, very aggressively encouraging people to solarize, put up windmills, whatever, you know, get into the grid, get on the grid. The private companies see this, rightfully so, as a threat. The public company or companies are committed first to serving the people. The private companies are committed first to making a profit. Shouldn't there not be a profit in something that is the commons, that, that, that is essential, literally essential to life, electricity in the, in the United States? That becomes a slippery slope then. I mean, at what point does a utility or a utility be, be socialized? It, it's, it's crazy to think. A lot of people think now that Internet is a public utility and uh, uh, the government has actually started to make rules. I mean, net neutrality is one of those, those things as well. At what point do we say, OK, well, all utilities then, if it's, if it's for the common good, should be government owned. I don't think if you start doing that at a certain point, you're going to end up just an entirely socialized not, country. First, first of all, let's redefine terms here. It's not government owned. It's owned by we the people, right? I mean, 
you know, the, the utilities are typically owned by local towns, counties, or states. And I'm not even sure there's any utilities that are state-owned, but usually they're locally owned. They have local boards of governors. Sometimes they're elected, sometimes they're appointed, but they're, they're representative of the people. And, and, you know, in terms of the slippery slope, I would say wherever there is a natural monopoly, wherever you can only get one thing, right? Uh, you know, whether it's septic, whether it's water, whether it's electricity, uh, whether, uh, frankly, whether it's the, the copper coming into your home with broadband. I think that that should be regulated as a utility. And ideally, I'm not arguing for the, for the nationalization of, uh, of the internet, you know, of, of individual ISPs, although I could make that argument, but I'm not. Um, but, but with regard to electricity, water, and septic, you know, the, the just core stuff essential to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, if, if we know, and we now know, I mean, there's just a pile of evidence that doing this for, on a for-profit basis not only doesn't produce the best outcome, but produces the most expensive outcome, so, shouldn't, shouldn't we ban that? I have, you know, I got no problem with saying, let's just nationalize these. I, it wouldn't be nationalized. It would be localizing them. But, you know, it's, it, it, I, I was living in Portland, Oregon, and the city of Portland tried to buy PG&E, which was not the whole West Coast, just the, in Oregon. They tried to buy their local utility from Enron. And Enron, and, they, and Enron was af, asking, I forget the, the amount, let's say it was $5 million. It was probably 50 or 500 or whatever. But they had an asking price, publicly stated. The city of Portland said, we will pay you the asking price. And Ken Lay said, we are going to refuse to sell to any government agent. We will only sell to another for-profit corporation. Right, they're they're, huh. they're in to make money. I mean, that, yeah. that's, that's, but, I'm not sure if that's a well, problem or, or or what. But if you, if if it was full, the government came to me, if the government came to me and said, "Well, Dave, you know, we want to buy your house." Yeah, but your house is not part of the commons. And by the way, Maybe the government, in in order for the electric company to transmit electricity to my house, they may well have come to you and said, "Dave, we're going to buy your house, and, and we're going to give it to the power company. We're going to give it to Enron and let them run their power lines across it because we're going to put a transmission line through here." You know, if the government said, "Like, we want your thing." Whatever that thing is, I would say no, because it's my thing. And the government does not have a right. In some cases, I guess they do with power lines and, and uh, eminent domain, right. But if I'm in the business of making money, which I am, any business is in the business of making money. That's the point of business. But shouldn't anything that, that uses eminent domain, anything where, where your home and my home can be taken for the, for the public good, doesn't that just imply right off the bat that this is for the public good, that this is... This is, this is, you know, this is a natural monopoly. This is something that should be part of the commons rather than part of the for-profit sphere. Maybe that can be kind of a, a, a theory going forward where you have new utilities or you're pushing for new utilities well, in places that, that, that are not currently serviced. But I very much vehemently disagree that, that the government should be going in and taking over utilities for even, even a, a, an asking a market price. Why? It's just not right. It's not Why? right for the government to, to, to own and to socialize these things, and whether it's a federal government, a state government, or local government. I don't understand why. What's, what, what is the benefit to you and me as consumers of electricity to having for-profit companies you know, telling us that we can't have solar panels on our houses, which will save us money, telling us, no, we're not going to let you do that, uh, when a government-owned agency would say, please do that. We, we would love to not have to build another power plant. And that's going to be the difference, I think, in, in ideologies. Uh, certainly, you'd uh, rather pay more in in service of the so-called free market. I'd rather have less government, and less government run things. I mean, the government why can't, the government can't run diddly squat correctly. Oh, that's not true. The post office works great. Nobody's ever missed a social security check. The army is is uh, uh, maybe not the most efficient, horribly. but the post office works horribly, horribly. Or take, I mean, take a look. Take a look to get a letter. Take a look at at metros, Washington's metro, uh, metro system, the subway system here. It's owned by. Three, it's run by three different uh, – uh, one entity that is run by the governments of D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. All three put money in this thing. And right, what, but what, the what D.C. part of it is those funds are determined by Congress, and the Republicans in Congress have been short-funding Metro here in D.C. for over a decade. And as a result of that, the maintenance that was supposed to be done never got done. I mean that, that – you know, if yeah, I, I agree with you. If you're going to have a government-owned uh, utility, in this case Metro, at least fund it appropriately. Funding is important, absolutely. But at the same time, you have government-run things, including government-run, not government-run unions, but you have these unions that that are causing the metro system to catch on fire on a daily basis. I mean, unions? They, yeah, yeah. The unions are. You're talking about the union of Republicans in Congress who are cutting the funding to Metro? <laughs> no, I'm talking about the unions actually at at Metro themselves, uh, keeping on on board these these people who basically can't be fired for essentially killing people. Metro's defending. So, so we've we've. Oh wow. 
I think we're wandering far afield. We probably right are. Now. We probably yeah. are. Um, Ideologically, I don't think it's a good idea for more government to be taking over control of things. Other than, the, than a reflexive hatred of government, which would imply a hatred of George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and Abraham not Lincoln all. and all the people who brought us this government. There is a role in government. It's not to run utilities. Why not? Why? Because they are not, they, because they're answering to you and me rather than answering to stockholders. And, you know, I, yeah, I don't mind if my blue jeans are made by somebody who answers to stockholders. In fact, I think it's the best way because blue jeans are not part of the commons. But my electricity, I, you know, I, I would like to have some say in it. And if a company says that they don't want to sell back to sell to the government, why, why should they be forced to? Because, uh, you mean they, do, wait a minute. You, you, you said, you, you said, said in, in, in if Portland. a utility does, oh, if, yeah, that, that, well, that was, that was, that was a comment about how Enron was basically echoing your sentiment. We're not going to sell this to the city because we just dislike the idea of publicly owned utilities. Because there's, you know, there's kind of a war going on in the utility sector, sector right now between public and private. And, and, um, but, but I still don't understand why you, why you, why you think that if government does it, it's bad. I mean, you know, shouldn't, shouldn't we, I mean, isn't the whole point of representative democracy to make government work for all of us? Shouldn't we also, uh, uh, try to promote the idea that the free market economy, the thing that this entire country is based on other than democracy is a, is a good thing. I mean, why, why do we want to have more government instead of less government? Why don't we want to have more people instead of government running these things. But, but you know, the, because it's better for our country. Is it? Better for us. Yeah. If when, they, when government government eventually takes control of our life. And you know, Ger down that Germany is producing slope. half of their electricity from solar power. And, and we've got, you know, uh, down in Florida, they're, they're passing, they're trying to pass a law to say, you can't sell any of your electricity. In Florida! Well, I think it's 42 states as of a couple years ago that allow uh, net metering. And I, I it's a very good thing. I think that it's a, it's a good thing to be able to uh, use no power. And then when you need some power, bring it back. So you're in favor of regulating for-profit utilities to force them to do net metering? I am in favor of reasonable regulations that make sense for everybody. I'm not in favor of government just willfully taking over. Okay, Dave McCullough, uh, Capital Media Partners. In a second. This is the Tom Hartman Program. D.T. McCullough, M-U-C-C, excuse me, M-C-C-U-L-L-O-C-H, uh, is the Twitter handle. Thank you, Dave. Thanks, Tom.